Hallelujah. The reason of our gathering here today is very simple. For the salvation of our word, of our souls. That is the primary reason why we are here today. The salvation of our souls. Anything else other will come later. Hallelujah. As the Bible has said, seek the kingdom of heaven first. And its righteousness. And all these things will be what? So these things are what? House, car, money, job, wife, husband. Mm, I know some they are here for marriage. You are looking for a wife. You seek the kingdom of heaven first. And the wife will follow. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Okay, without wasting much of your time, we just want to turn to the word of God. And see what comes next. Hallelujah. Mm. May you open your Bible with me, that book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 11. We'll read from verse 20 to 24. So let's read that verse 20. Then Jesus began to denounce the towns in which most of his miracles had been performed. Ha! I was worried about this when I was reading here. I said, ah, how can you perform a miracle after that you begin to denounce these, these people that you perform a miracle for? I perform a miracle for you, after that I denounce you. What happened? Let's go ahead. Because they did not repent. Because they did not what? Repent. They did not repent. After performing serious miracles, people did not see a need of repentance, a call for repentance. Rather, they took their miracles and spent them doing the things that are contrary to God's will. Verse 21. Who to you, Chorazin? Who to you, Bethsaida? For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth. You listen to this? And ashes. Verse 22. But I tell you, it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. 23. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted to the heavens? No. You will go down to Hades. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But I tell you that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. Hey. Hallelujah. Wow. So, we'll just take our message. The danger of receiving a miracle and fail to maintain. This is our message title. The danger of receiving a miracle and fail to what? To maintain. I know everyone that is here is here for a miracle. You are here for a miracle. And what is a miracle before we go ahead with the message? A miracle is something that is beyond human comprehension, human understanding. You cannot tell how it happened. And if you are short-sighted spiritually, you cannot even see the hand that has performed that miracle, but you only see a thing happening. Then you say, ah, how did it happen? It is a mystery, 
A miracle is a mystery. Because it's not of this planet. No. It's not of this planet. It is from another planet. I mean another realm. So for a miracle to happen here on earth, that means the humanity and the divinity are to come together for a miracle to take place. The humanity and the what? The divinity have to come together for a miracle to be conceived. There cannot be a miracle when there is no humanity and the divinity coming together. Let me say this to you. Before you even arrived here, they arrived before you. They were waiting for you. The divinity had come already. Early, around 4 a.m. or 3 a.m., they were already here. Waiting for the humanity to come. This is why there cannot be a baby unless a woman and a man have intimacy. They have to come together to produce a child. So same applies with a miracle. It cannot happen. God cannot do anything alone. He cannot do anything alone. He needs man to perform a miracle. You look at the time he wanted to deliver Israel in Egypt. He had to use a man, Moses, to go and rescue the Israelites. God is God. But if he comes here on earth and his feet touches the earth, the whole earth will be destroyed. So he cannot come down himself here. If he comes down here on earth himself, that means the world is come to an end. So this is why he needs a man to send on his behalf. So anything that God does here on earth, he uses a man. Let me quote the words of my mentor, Prophet Tibi Joshua. He says, God has no hands here on earth. Or a farm to go and plow. Office to begin to arrange the files and whatever. He has no hands but our hands. He has no feet but our feet. He has no mouth but he uses our mouth. This is why when he spoke on Mount Sinai, the whole Israel requested for Moses to go there, them far away from the mountain because it was unbearable to them. The voice was unbearable to them. They said, no, 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 no. You go and talk to your God. Bring the word to us. We cannot stand this voice. So if God finally comes here, what will happen on earth? So this is why he needs a man. Hallelujah. Here why he needs a man. God was able by himself to divide the Red Sea. In Exodus in chapter 14 from verse 16 going downwards. He was capable of dividing the Red Sea alone and the children of Israel to pass through the dry ground. But he wanted to use a man. Why? Why did God want to use a man? Well, he's capable of doing this. He's the one who created the sea. Why did he want a man to perform a miracle? See how important you are in the eyes of God. He knows that the earth belongs to man. He knows that the earth belongs to us. So anything that he wants to do here, though it is his, aha, he will want to go through a man. Jesus came here on earth and sent by God the Father to Chorazin, Tyre, to preach and perform miracles. And the Bible says, 
after receiving miracles, people did not repent. They did not repent. And he said, woe to you, Tyre and Chorazin. For if these miracles were performed to other cities, they would have repented in sackcloth and in ashes. God cannot answer our prayers without a miracle. I use this word, miracle, because anything that God does for us here is a miracle. Tell me about anything that God does for you, anything that God gives you, is a miracle. It is a miracle. God answers our prayers by a miracle. You know, what you, you are praying for, what you are seeking for right now, you don't have it. But after prayer, you finally receive a call. Come and get this. How did it happen? This will tell you that this is a miracle. There's an intervention of the divinity. There was an intervention of the what? The divinity. You say, ah, how did it happen? Ah, I never applied. I never sent my CV there. I know, I did not send any CV. No, I did not say, no, 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 we have your CV here. No. What, 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 which company is this one? They tell you the name. I said, no, I did not send any CV there. I said, no, we have your CV. Please rush right now. We want you to sign your contract. Otherwise, you lose your job. You carry your bag, you run there, you find the, there's a CV with your name there. You say, ah, but I did not apply here. This is what you call a miracle. You see, there are some things that God left purposely or allowed to happen purposely. Taking from the book of John chapter 9, from verse 1 to the end, the Bible talks about the man who was born blind. The disciples asked and said, what happened? What is the cause of his blindness? Is it because of the sins of his fathers or his forefathers? Or himself he sinned? Jesus said, neither him, neither his parents sinned. But this happened so that God will reveal his glory through him. So you will see that your, your problem may not be the cause of which is a wizard. May not be the cause of demonic spirits. But God allowed it purposely for a miracle to happen in your life. So that it will bring you back to repentance and enter the kingdom of heaven. But many people, when they receive a miracle, it doesn't even shock them. It doesn't shock them. It doesn't even an inch. You tend to wonder what kind of a human being is this. You are not shocked. You are not even shocked how this happened. You see people being prayed for here, the lame walking, the blind see, the, the deaf hear, and you are seated here, you are watching on the screen, and it doesn't move even an inch because it did not happen to you. Hey, what kind of a generation are we living in? What kind of a generation is this one? Whereby God performs a miracle and people they labeled it as the power of the devil rather than the power of God. This is what is happening in our generation today. When God uses a man to deliver people, to heal people, we say, ah, he's a Jewish man. He's a satanic man. He's, a, he's using diabolic powers. If, does it mean every power here on earth belongs to Satan? Are you magnifying Satan above your God? You know, with these eyes, 2006, I bought a decoder. When I was scrolling, scrolling the channels there, I found a, a, a TV channel called Emano TV. I said, what? 2016, I mean 2006. I said, no, let me just watch. I was watching for a few minutes. I saw this man. It was a preaching. He was wearing a very big jacket. I said, ah, who is this man? By then I was now a... A, a, a Christian, I had to listen to the word for some few minutes. Ha! The message was very simple but very powerful. And I said, Ah, let me go ahead and watch. As I was watching after the, that program of the word, it came the healing program. 
I saw a young man with what we call a battle cancer. His battle was eaten by the cancer to the level that you could see. You could see the bone. You could see the hip bone, that one, inside the white bone. And the past was oozing, oozing, oozing. He was just there. You know, the young man couldn't sit down, couldn't lie down. He was crying, crying. The mother was there weeping, crying for help to the man of God. And I'm watching. I said, ah, how would this happen? I said, no, my father died with cancer. It was an eye cancer. I said, no. Let me watch and see what will happen to this young man. I'm seeing the man of God. He said, please bring the cotton wool. You know cotton wool? Bring the cotton wool. They brought the cotton wool. He said to the mother, put on the gloves. She put on the gloves. They said, just push the, the cotton wool inside there. Push it inside there. He covered the wound with the cotton wool. He said, put more. He had to put more cotton wool there. He began to pray for him. What is the cotton wool was there? He said, when you go back home, don't remove the cotton wool. Leave it like that. Don't even remove the cotton wool. After some few weeks, the young man came back. The very cotton wool that was left there transformed to flesh. It transformed to what? To flesh. And I said, what? And it, it, it was, there was, it was remaining a small cotton wool that was there. I said, what? That miracle transformed my faith, my belief in Christ. I said, no. How can God use a man to this extent? My father died with cancer. No. No. This is when I was glued to a man on TV up to today. And I had to make a decision of saying, no, no, no. I'd rather be a partner with this Emmanuel TV. Because such kind of miracles, they are profound. Such kind of miracles, they are beyond women's senses, beyond science. To me, it's called for full repentance. But to you today, you watch them and you just say, ah, it's a miracle. Then you go home. Let me tell you, every miracle that God performs, either for your neighbor or for your brother or for your mother or your sister or for yourself, that miracle must bring you more closer to God. It must bring you more closer to who? Rather than turning you away from God. This is why today we have many people who came for breakthrough. Job breakthrough, career breakthrough, business breakthrough. After prayer, they receive their breakthrough. But today, there are no way to be found in the house of God. You will see them after some time weeping or back to the prayer line with a placard. How did you lose the job? You thought the job you were given was for pleasure. No, it wasn't for pleasure. This is why you see that even the money that you own, that you call it yourself your own money, it, that, is, it, that money does not belong to you. It belongs to him. He gives you the money, but at the same time, that money is his. He has power over that money again. And if you use it in such a way that he doesn't like it, he can come again and take it away from you. That's why we have millionaires, people who, have, who we admire, millionaires, whatever. Today, they are down to zero. They have nothing. They did not honor God for those miracles. You need to honor God for that miracle that he gave you or which is about to give to you. Do you know we have many people here <clears throat> you are given a job by God after prayer but the challenge that you had was that you concluded that it is, it is done, it is over. You never thought of asking God why have you given me this job? Why have you given me this business? Why have you given me this miracle, this breakthrough? What must I do? You see, in Judges chapter 13, there was a man that was called Manoah. 
Manoah was married to his wife. They stayed years without a baby. Manoah's wife went to the field to plow. An angel from heaven was sent to her. And he spoke words that were very touching. He said, you shall conceive a son and he shall be a Nazarene of God. A Nazarene of who? Not of you, but of God. Meaning to say the child is not yours. It's mine. <laughs> it's not your child, it's my child. Yes, you have stayed for years without a baby. I'm giving you a baby, but this baby is mine. When she went back home, she found the husband is back. He said to the husband, Ah, I met a man in the field there. He told me words that ah, touched my heart so much. He said, We shall have a child and we must name him Samson and he shall be a Nazarene of God. He said, What? Who is this man? He said, Ah, the man is very, very, very wonderful to behold. When you look at him, he's, 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 he's a very, very handsome man. I don't know who is this man. He said, no, let's pray and ask God to bring this man back there to pray. After prayer, she went back to the field the following day. And the man came back. You see, how wise these people were. When the man came back, the woman rushed back home and called the husband. The man is here. Come and meet him. He said, are you the man that came yesterday and talked to my wife? Yes, I'm the one. Okay. So what can we do? What shall we do? Let me read it for you. Judges 13. Listen to this. Chapter, chapter 13 verse 1. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. You see? What does, it, what does it tell you? Before you move on, before you move, move on. Listen to this statement here. Again, the Israelites did evil. Meaning to say, they once did what? In the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. Listen to this. The evil that you do, outside there. Be careful. It may deliver you. God may deliver you to your enemy for 40 years, for 10 years, for 100 years. <laughs> and you are doing it, you are enjoying Say, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying. It's nice to be here. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying. You are dancing. Be careful not to be delivered to your enemies for 100 years. A certain man of Zora named Manoah from the clan of Dinah had a wife who was childless and able to give birth. The angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, You are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. Now, see to it that you drink no wine, my God, or other fermented drink, and that you do not eat anything unclean. You will become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor because the boy is to be a Nazareth dedicated to God from the womb. You will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Then the woman went to her husband and told him, A man of God came to me. He looked like an angel of God, very awesome. I didn't ask him where he came from, and he didn't tell me his name. But he said to me, you will become pregnant and have a son. Now then, drink no wine or other fermented drink, and do not eat anything unclean, because the boy will be a Nazarene of God from the womb until the day of his death. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord, listen to this, pardon your servant, Lord, I beg you, to let the man of God you sent to us come again to teach us how to bring up the boy who is to be born. You listen to this. After getting that job of yours, you never went back to God and asked him 
How can I take care of this job? What must I do? You married a woman. You thought the woman was supposed to cook for you, wash for you, give birth to children only. Huh? God gave you a house. You thought that house was just for sleeping. <laughs> huh? He gave you a car. Is it for roaming around, for traveling up and down? God gave you a degree. Is it for show off? For pride reasons, classic reasons. <laughs> huh? God gave you a truck. You say, ah, I will not carry anyone. This is a truck. God gave you a car. You, when it's raining, you pass people. God gave you children. You're just looking at them. Is it only to feed them and tell them, go and sleep? After we receive miracle from God, we are to go back to God in prayer. Ask him, Lord, I don't know the reason why you gave me this thing, oh, but I want to know. Please, I beg of you, have mercy on me. Tell me, how must I take care of this blessing? What must I do to maintain this blessing? Many people lose it, their blessing, their miracle, because they don't have maintenance. It's like someone give you a car and you fail to take it to maintenance. I mean for service. That car will someday knock the engine. This is why we are what we are today. This is the reason of what we are today. We just receive. But we do not go back to the one who gave and ask him the instruction. What are we supposed to do with this? The first thing that you get there from God is number one repentance. Now, repentance will be the first one. Because that miracle is a sign of love. I love you. And I know you. Giving you a miracle, it means God knows you. It's like a man of God come to you and give you words of prophecy from God, not from himself. It's a sign that God knows you. You are known in heaven. God knows you that you are here on earth. That must be a miracle to you. But some get a prophecy. After getting a prophecy, instead of that prophecy to bring you to repentance and change fully and become a good Christian, a good citizen, the worse you become. <laughs> the worse you become. You will start to position yourself above other people. We have not even received that prophecy from that man of God, from, from, from this man of God. or from You put yourself high above everyone. To God, it's now pride. Be careful of your downfall. It's very close. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I've seen many. I've seen many. Sometimes even my children here, when they travel somewhere, they get prophets, they come here, they change. For them, they walk like this. I say, hey, have I sinned? What have I done? I will never prophesy to you what God has not spoken to me. If I don't have anything from you, I'd rather shut up. So a miracle must bring you to what? To repentance. It must bring you to what? To repentance. A miracle is a call of repentance. Repent, repent, repent. Because Chorazin, Tyre, Capernaum, the Bible says they will go to judgment because they did not value the miracles that were performed to them. I pray that your miracle that you received may not bring you to a judgment of God. Amen. It's a serious matter, this one. It's a serious case. When I read this one, I was in scorn reading it on the altar. I was shocked. My spirit, it is the spirit that led me to this chapter. I said, read here. I said, ah, why should I read about chorus in entire whatever? And this is when I had to get small message. And I quickly had to jot it down. Let me tell you this. God Almighty loves sinners, but he hates sin. You, he loves you. But the sin in you is the one that he hates. This is why, even though you are in sin, 
He still supply food for you to eat. Water to drink. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, listen to this. Listen to me. When God causes the rain to rain, does it mean it's only meant for the righteous only? Even for the wicked, they benefit. The wicked people benefit there. The sun that comes, they also benefit. It's not only for the righteous. Everything that God does here on earth, even right now when God says there will be mineral, minerals here, outside here, you find that even those ones, the worst sinners, they will be the first ones to arrive there and say, hey, this is our gold, this is our diamond. Are you getting my sense? So anything that God does here on earth is for everyone to benefit. But behind that miracle, there is a call of repentance. A call of what? You see, some of you, if it was not sickness or poverty or limitations, stagnation, you wouldn't be here today. You'll be here today. You'll be maybe it's Sunday today. You'll be busy partying, partying. Maybe put a big radio, big speaker outside your house with your friends. Like a kiki. You'll be dancing, dancing, whatever. Or maybe you're not here. God, God gave you a lot of money. You bought a Range Rover, you have traveled to Habiron or to Lusaka or rather you are eating money there. Sunday, we are enjoying this weekend. And you tell yourself that Monday I'm supposed to be back in the office. You travel drunk again. And you arrive here drunk. 900 kilometers driving drunk, you arrive here. You say, it's me, I'm safe, I know how to drive. Are you sure? Can't you see a miracle behind it that, that it was God who take care of you? You know, when you are drunk and you drive, this is why they say, don't drink and... Because it's dangerous. It's dangerous for your life. But people drink and drive and arrive safe and they tell themselves that they are experienced in driving. They are experienced in what? In driving. They don't see God behind <laughs> oh my God. Are you listening to what I'm saying? We need to be grateful to God for each and every single miracle which he gives to us. For you to wake up alive is number one greatest miracle that you are to be thankful of. How many went to bed and woke up dead? They just found themselves standing before the throne of God. Right now, you may go home and say, I'm going to sleep or whatever. Boom. In a small space of time, you find yourself before the throne of God. Uh -huh. Your books are opened now. Okay. You did a piece. I did not do it. I did not. They play the video for you there. Why am I here? It's judgment time. Look at your body. You find your body is lying dead there. And they're crying. Your wife is crying. Your children are saying, hey, my daddy, my daddy, hey, whatever. There's no more chance to go back to your body. Judgment now. Some today, I'm talking about today, today, maybe from 2 a.m. up to this hour, this is about quarter to one, you'll find that there are some people while they are still, they're queuing to, to, for judgment. They are entering one by one. Da -da, da -da, da -da. And you are seated here, you call yourself clever, wise, powerful. Hey! Sit on Tyre, Chorazin. Why have you rejected the miracles of God? Why have you denounced the Savior who has come to give you a miracle of repentance? Victoria Falls. Hallelujah. Amen. You. A miracle to you is money. I know you. A miracle to his what? Money. If it's not money, it's not a miracle. I needed money, money, money. If you receive money, say, hey, what a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. When God gives you good health. If God gives you a child, why, why give me a child? You are eating poverty upon poverty. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
This is, this is the character of many people here. You don't actually see this blessing as a treasure from God. Imagine how many people need children. God wants to be a father to us. He wants to be a father to us and we children. And when we are children, anything that we want, we go to him boldly, as the Bible says. Your child cannot come to you shy to ask for something. Because if she's your child, he's your child, he come boldly. Mama, can I have a pen? He's your child. But if you find yourself, you're going to God like you are running away, like you are like Adam, you are covering yourself, whatever, there is a problem now. There is a what? A problem. Your miracle, your healing, your deliverance. People think that deliverance is not a testimony. If you watch a man on TV every Sunday, there are two or three testimonies of deliverance. Only deliverance. The person doesn't talk about money breakthrough, house breakthrough, wife breakthrough, or financial breakthrough, or whatever you can talk about. Only talking about his or her deliverance that is received. That is to tell you that deliverance is a miracle. How many people are demonic possessed outside there, struggling, suffering, even to make ends meet. They are failing, but you finally, you've been delivered from what has been oppressing you for years. And now you can go outside there and make the ends meet. Why can't you share a testimony of deliverance? Because it's a miracle, but you are not taking it as a miracle because to you, it's not valuable. You need money. Money is what you call miracle. <laughs> Mind you, how, how, how many years this spiritual husband has been tormenting you? Because how for in your marriage? Your husband fights you, you fight every day, you quarrel, you whatever. Spiritual wife. How many people are not married in your family? The demon comes here. We deliver you say i'm the one who caused them not to marry what 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 why can't you thank god for that you know it's a blessing when it's on to be delivered imagine the man with the legions of demons do you know that deliverance can cause an enmity for you to be delivered today you don't understand what i'm saying deliverance attracts enemies. Remember in chapter 5 of Mark, after the man with the legions of demons was delivered, the demons went to the swine and entered the swine and they rushed into the lake and died there. The people who were taking care of the swine, they ran to the city and said, look what has happened. The whole city came out and said to Jesus, we beg you to leave now. Don't ever enter our city. Go! Instead of being happy that a man that has been living in the graveyard has been finally delivered, but people rose against Jesus and pushed him out of the city. Enmity rose. After your deliverance, you find that even the people of your family that were the ones behind your challenges, witchcraft, they will be wished to, they whatever. After you are delivered, I tell you, I tell you, there'll be a problem. Some of you, the time you, first time you came here, they gave you warning. Don't go to that church again. I have many people. I have many people in this church. Some, they've been stopped to come here. They said, don't ever go to that church. After being delivered, they give you a strict warning. Never you go to Vobi. And they know that the church is here. Why do you go to Vobi? Don't go to Vobi. I say, ah, ah. is it not a church? They said, no, they don't want this church. I must not come to this church. But I love the church, but my parents, my people, they don't love this church. They said, I must not come and fellowship here. What is behind the church that caused people to be stopped to come to church? <laughs> and you, you need where you'll be accepted, where people will celebrate you. When you are entering the church, you say, 
is this what you want? <laughs> oh my God. I'm now used to this. Because the time me two hours delivered, oh, a lot happened. A lot happened. You know, there's no enemy that would love to lose his slaves. If you are benefiting through these people and finally they are delivered, remember what happened to Pharaoh. He got angry when God sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel. He said, oh, why are you taking my people? These are my people. He was benefiting a lot through them. So the same applies. There may be people in your family that are rich. Some people are doing rituals, money rituals through you people. They are killing you one by one, one by one as a sacrifice. And finally, you are about to go, you two. You finally come to church. You get delivered. Do you think they will be happy? Business will crumble. Their business will crumble because they don't have any sacrifice now. You know, one miracle, one miracle must shine your eyes to see that, ah, the world is wicked, oh, I need God. One miracle must shine your eyes. Your eyes, shine your eyes. Shua, shua, shua. I mean, open your eyes to see how wicked is this world. But you people, you think yeah, everything is well, it's okay, it's okay. If God open our eyes just for two seconds and see the other side of this world, hey, just to open your eyes for two seconds to see the other side of the world, I don't think you want to stay here. So, you are here, you are waiting for a miracle of Jesus. He want to give you. But what are you going to do with that miracle after that? I gave an advice. After you receive a miracle, go and ask God. What are you saying? What is your message behind this miracle? What is your message behind the what? Miracle. God may give you a car, but car doesn't talk. He cannot talk and say, ah, I want you to drive me to church, drive me to wherever, drive me to... No, it doesn't have... You, you are the mind and the eyes and the mouth of that car. <laughs> Ask God, what are you saying with this car? God will tell you, this car, I want you to use it A, B, C, D. This house, this land, may God bless his word in your heart.